From the murky waters of the sportsman's paradise, stories emerge. Stories of the generations of people who have shared in the bounties of the land. Stories of communities that have persevered through natural disasters. Stories of the abundance of fish, wildlife, and adventures that create an ecosystem rich in diversity. And from the silted banks of the mighty Mississippi to the soggy marsh bottoms, from the tops of towering pine forests to the depths of the salty gulf, human and animal have shared this fortune for centuries. Enjoy these stories as told by outdoor journalists who travel across our state documenting the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. Welcome to Bayou Wild. I'm Martha Spencer along with Don Dubuque and we're here at Morton Seafood Restaurant in Madisonville. Don, we had a great bird season this year. Pretty good. Uh, you know, the woodcock was very disappointing. We yes. didn't get to make a woodcock hunt, but as far as quail, pheasant, and chucka, yeah, it was good. Absolutely. And you took a trip up to South Dakota for a pheasant hunt. Yeah, this has been going on for several years. You know, we do the Cajun invasion to Alaska. We also do a Cajun invasion to South Dakota. We'll have details on it if you'd like to make it next year. Draper, South Dakota. It's a long ride, and it's pretty tough to rain up there, but the reward is really good. And we'll show you some of the folks that went up there with us this year. Came up here not knowing what to expect, wanting to hunt pheasant for a long time. Finally, when I made it up here, it's just been a wonderful experience. The, uh, the Bad River birds and bucks lodge here has just been fantastic. You know, it's uh, a lot of the company and the people that you're here with, the opportunity to hunt, side by side with folks that you actually know, and then an opportunity to meet people who have the same common interests that you do, and be out there as a team, working as a group, um, having a good time, actually. And Smokey got her first hand at Pheasants Smokey as well. Smokey is doing very well. In Absolutely. fact, uh, we've got another feature with Smokey and her sister, Latte. That's right. We went to hunt Chucker at the island, and that was my first Chucker hunt. Those birds can fly. How are we going to get him out of there? He's going, he might fly on your side, Dean. I see it right here. See it? The race is on. Uh, they're a lot faster than you think they are. They're, they're bigger than a quail, but they're real fast. And you got to shoot quick. Yes. And you got to know where, you, where, where the people are. You got to know where everybody is when you're shooting. When a bird comes behind you, you want to know where everybody's at. And the, horn, the orange is a necessity out here. We also went to Poplarville and did another quail hunt. We'll check those out as well. And of course, with all these birds, you gotta know how to cook them. Right, and I've got a recipe from a friend of mine, Carl Beyer, called pheasant parmesan. It's really good. It's not that difficult to do, and pheasant can be a little tricky to right. cook, and we'll give you some tips on doing that. Yeah, you wanna get that golden brown. You're not really cooking the birds here. You're gonna cook them slow in the oven. But what you're doing here is getting them crispy on the outside with those Italian breadcrumbs. And like I said, it's also adding some seasoning into it too. Closed captioning made possible by CETO.com. Become a member. I've been using Louisiana fish fry products so much, even the kids are getting into it. Find the old bag, pour and boil, a great crawfish every time. And whether you're boiling crawfish, shrimp, or crabs, Louisiana fish fry products use the perfect blend of garlic, onion, spices, and salt for your seafood boil. So look for the bright yellow bag and pour and boil with Louisiana Fish Fry products. If you're lucky enough to bag a deer or a hog this season, bring it here to Double D. Double D processes hogs and exotic game and guarantees your product is always the meat you brought to Double D. Double D Meats in Bogalusa, home of country smoked, spicy jalapeno cheddar, and other customized flavors. Bring your deer or your hog here to Double D, where you always get your meat back in return. It's worth a drive to Bogalusa from anywhere. Double D.
our ultimate goal is to have birds reproducing in the wild where we no longer have to do reintroductions and someday have a self-sustaining population of cranes. These cranes are a part of our heritage and they're back in Louisiana and they're going to stay. The birds really like this habitat um, and they're going to continue to, to use it. Please visit lawff.org and make a donation. What would possess someone to drive hundreds of miles across the country and hike through frigid temperatures just for a bird hunt? Well, pheasants are generally a running bird, so we like to get them surrounded as best we can so they can't just vacate the premises before we even get a chance to shoot at them. So we like to set up a group of uh, what we call walkers who are going to push the birds down to one end of the cover that we're hunting. And then we like to set up a bunch of blockers who are going to keep the birds from just blowing out the far end. We also put out flankers, who are the guys that keep the birds from just going out the sides. And hopefully, if we do it right, we end up at the end in a big circle. The birds get up nice and high, and we shoot every one of the roosters that comes up. During the annual Cajun invasion to Draper, South Dakota, Louisiana hunters experience a type of hunting they'll never find in the South. Rooster! Came up here not knowing what to expect, wanting to hunt pheasant for a long time. Finally, when I made it up here, it's just been a wonderful experience. The, uh, the Bad River birds and bucks lodge here has just been fantastic. It's just been a great experience, to, especially since it's my first time ever pheasant hunting. Well, uh, everything about it's different other than you shooting a gun at a bird. I mean, you know, back home it's waterfowl hunting. We're sitting in a blind. It's typically not quite as cold. We don't have a whole lot of snow. Um, these are drive hunts. We're, we're uh, lining up, and the guides are really good about setting us up in the proper positions to, you know, to drive and have flankers and blockers. And, you know, typically the birds are giving you um, some different shots than we often oh, get. I actually think it's a great experience for couples. You know, I'd like to actually see more women take um, an opportunity to learn hunting and fishing. I think it's beautiful being in the outdoors and maybe there are a lot of female hunters or female folks who don't realize that there are tremendous opportunities to go out into the outdoors, spend time with your husband even if you or your boyfriend, even if you don't want to hunt. There's plenty of opportunities to take shots with cameras and look at nature and it's just a really great time to be outdoors with the person that you care about. Nope! Despite high winds, ice, snow, and unforgiving terrain, what a group of hunters will gain from an upland bird hunting adventure is the joy of learning from other passionate outdoors. Good shot! I was a little surprised. I, I had never killed a, a pheasant before, and uh, you know, it's only roosters up here, but they're just beautiful and, and a little bigger than most of the ducks we're killing. So just a beautiful bird, uh, really neat experience. You know, it's just, I've never been involved with thriving birds. You know, I used to herd cattle and all that kind of stuff, but this is, it's absolutely wonderful when you get to do what they call a, a push and you got blockers on one end sitting there trying to keep the birds from getting away from all of us and, and four or five people just actually going down a, a ridge or down a, a wood line or something, just pushing birds because these pheasant run. They don't like to fly until they get to the very end. And then, then I, it's basically everything breaks loose at that point in time when they're trying to get out and figure out which way to go and how to get there. It's a lot of the company and the people that you're here with, the opportunity to hunt side by side with folks that you actually know and then an opportunity to meet people who have the same common interests that you do and be out there as a team, working as a group, um, having a good time, actually. 
When you come back from South Dakota from a pheasant hunt, not only do you return with a fine game bird for the table, but also some beautiful souvenirs, like a pheasant skin and those long pin tails that are the identification of the cock pheasant. You notice I was not on that hunt. I am more of a warm weather person, but for folks that are a little hardier than me, What's the weather like up there? Oh, you're hardy enough. You could have done it easily. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of walking. Yes. It's a little bit different from conventional bird hunting where you follow your dog, dog's point, you've got two or three people shooting. These are really big drives and pushes where you've got people who are blockers, you've got them on the wing, and then you've got the drivers and the dogs. So it's a very well-organized hunt. But it's a little physical and it's very cold up there, usually going to encounter some snow and ice. So you do have to be in pretty good shape. So if 32 and below is not your thing, you can hunt closer to home in Mississippi or in Louisiana at the island where we did our first chucker hunt. And we also take you to Poplarville where we went after the uh, quail again with Laney as well. And you can see that coming up. Right over here, Melee. I've had her since she was a puppy and we learned how to do it together and that's just kind of our thing and it makes me really happy to watch her really happy. Oh, there's two, there's two. Bird down! Woo! Hi, I'm Miss Louisiana Holly Conway on behalf of the Louisiana Propane Dealers. I'm sure you know that clean, affordable propane gas is used in houses across our state. It's used in cooking, hot water heaters, drying clothes, and heating homes. But did you know that if you ever run out of propane, you need a certified dealer to inspect your system for leaks before it's refilled? That's the law. Propane is a safe and exceptional energy source, and we want to keep it that way. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get delivery seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. Some hunters seek the challenge of learning how to hunt a new species, but may lack the time to travel across the country. At the Island Hunting Company in Paradis, Louisiana, brush patches are home to another exciting upland bird species, chucker. Whoa, steady. Steady. Got one right here, Chris. Yep. Whoa, whoa. Over here. Find it. Find it. Find it. Right there. Find it. Whoop. Shoot him. Good shot. Oh. I thought it got hit. I thought it kind of flinched. Oh, going down. <laughs> right, when you hear a chucker, a lot of people go, what? They don't even know what a chucker is. Chuckers are a member of the bird family, kind of like a pheasant, but they're smaller. They're bigger than a quail, but they fly much more like a quail. They come out of there like a bottle rocket. They don't get real high like a pheasant. They just want to get away from you and put up, as many feet up. between you and the barrel of the shotgun and the bird as they can. Now, how are we going to get him out of there? He's going. He might fly on your side, Dean. I see it right here. See it? If the race is on. <laughs> good girl. Good girl. Good job. Now, chucker is something between a, a quail, a little bigger, but not quite as big as a pheasant, but fly just as fast or faster than either of those. Let's go, let's get another one. Get another bird. Come on. Now, the chucker's a pretty interesting bird. They were never native to anywhere on the North American continent. They were brought here from some of the Middle East and the Asian countries, but they have adapted to some of our habitat, the mountainous areas like Idaho, Wyoming, maybe Montana, you can find wild birds. But other than that, it's shooting on preserves. Yeah, they're a lot faster than you think they are. They're, they're bigger than a quail, but they're real fast. And you got to shoot quick. Yes. And you got to know where, you, where, where the people are. You got to know where everybody is when you're shooting. A bird comes behind you, you want to know where everybody's at. And the, horn, the orange is a necessity out here. People ask me, what's it like hunting in South Dakota for pheasant as compared to down here at the island? Well, I got to tell you, the biggest difference is about 17 hours of driving. Temperature, of course, up there, sometimes you're in the negative, below freezing, 
snow, ice, you're not likely to encounter that here. So it's a world of difference, but same bird, same amount of excitement. Run out, George, run it out. Dead bird! <laughs> Put out a, probably about a dozen chucks in a day for y'all, and uh, dog court great, everything went lovely. Uh, y'all got uh, probably 90% of them, so some good shooting out there. It's a, it's a new thing we're trying out here. We do the, we do the, the a pheasant tower shoot, and we're doing the uh, walk, and, walk and shoot with the dogs. Game preserves are great places to try different types of hunting that you may not be able to do on public land. Good shot, good Woo! shot! <laughs> I got it, I don't care who it was. Touch it up, Millie, dead bird! The bond and companionship is shared between hunter and canine at places like Crane Creek Shooting Preserve, a place where you can book a quail hunt in Poplarville, Mississippi. I've had her since she was a puppy and we learned how to do it together and that's just kind of our thing and it makes me really happy to watch her really happy. Oh, there's two, there's two. Burn down, woo! I'm still not the best quail hunter, but I actually found that after going home to Connecticut and shooting sporting clays with my dad, I actually felt a lot more confident. Still have room for improvement for sure, but I did feel a little bit better about actually where to put my gun and how to hit the bird. Good girl. Drop. Good girl. Quail and chucker are certainly similar, but they also have their differences. Chucker are like little flying bullets. They move very quickly and they get away a lot faster, I think, than the quail did. They also can fly a little bit quicker, so you only get one shot and then they're pretty much gone. Someone hit one. There are obviously a few places across the south where there's still some wild quail and dove, but not too many, so shooting on a preserve it is somewhat of a controlled environment. If you're ever questioning the validity of hunting in a controlled environment at a preserve, just try it, see if it's for you, because honestly, there's so much activity that you forget that you're in a place where they actually place the birds, and you forget the fact that uh, they're actually farm raised. You really don't realize that when they're flying because they have their instincts as a bird and they're gonna react like a wild bird as well. Down, oh, somebody! <laughs> My dad has been part of the Parker Gun Club for many years, and I really didn't know too much about his history with guns. I knew we had a lot of them, and he still continues to have a lot of them, and I knew he collected them, but I didn't really know too much about his experience shooting them. But once my dad saw my interest in hunting, he wanted to introduce me to the older style guns. There's kind of a romance with these older guns that I think is kind of a lost art. The gun that I inherited from him is about as old as I am, but he certainly has guns that are much older, and I think he sees it as kind of a sad thing that these old style side-by-sides and over-unders are kind of losing their luster and people aren't shooting them enough. So it's nice to pass along the legacy that he kind of feels so passionate about. In 1967, Dutch Stogner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stogner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook.
you make a hunt up north and you come back with some pheasants or someone gives you some, here's something you can do with them. It's called Pheasant Parmesan a la Carl Beyer. Carl Beyer is a hunting buddy of mine and he introduced us to this recipe after one of our Kansas trips. You start off with the filet pheasant breast and you want to dry them out, lay them down. And the really important thing to do with pheasant is two things. One, they're a lot like turkey and they're easy to overcook and they have a tendency to dry out so you don't want to overcook them. The other thing is wild pheasant can be a little bit on the tough side. So what you need to get is one of these meat hammers. Now this one's got those knobbies on the side of it and that's the side you want to use. You want to place the filet breast down with the membrane up and just give it a good work over pounding each one. It'll break down all those tough membranes and give it a lot of tenderization. You could use some artificial tenderizer if you'd like, but sometimes that makes it a little salty, but there are some unsalted versions. Now once you get the breast flattened out and pounded down tender, now this egg wash consists of milk. It's also got a little bit of Louisiana fish fry to give it some kick. Once you get these done, then we're gonna take them over and, and brown them up in some olive oil, which is another very important ingredient. Again, this is uh, on the seasoning that you put into your milk and egg wash. Doesn't matter, whichever one you like is fine. I happen to like this Louisiana fish fry. It's a good all around flavoring for a number of different things. Now, the important step is make sure you brown them up really good in golden brown and some good olive oil. Yeah, you wanna get that golden brown. You're not really cooking the birds here. You're gonna cook them slow in the oven. But what you're doing here is getting them crispy on the outside with those Italian breadcrumbs. And like I said, it's also adding some seasoning into it too. Our next step is to put some red gravy on it. Now you can home make your own gravy or get any prepared gravy you like. I happen to like Sal and Judy's Creole Italian. This is one of my favorites from Sal and Judy's restaurant in Lacombe. They also market their own line of seasonings and you can find them in most of the grocery stores. You take this and you just kind of pour it over your pheasant breast. Be real generous with it. And then once you've got those breasts covered, and you gotta do this in a deep dish pan, then you get six cheese Italian flavored cheese. This is available at all the stores. It's got a combination of Romano, mozzarella and a couple of other ones and you're real generous with this cheese i mean you want to go with the whole pack of cheese on here because this cheese adds an awful lot to the recipe now once you get it covered in cheese you got your gravy on you're ready for the next step which is to bring it to a 275 degree oven and you let it go for about 45 minutes Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection. And rich with tradition. A taste that's savory. Crispy. And a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. After the 45 minutes in the 275 degree oven, you can see that the cheese is brown. And what I did was I turned it up to brawl for just a few minutes to let that cheese get good and brown. And once that's done, the only step left is to take it, scoop it onto your plate, add a little bit of Parmesan cheese, and maybe some parsley flakes or some fresh parsley. And there you have it, pheasant a la Carl Bayer Parmesan. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. 
boiled to perfection, and rich with tradition. A taste that's savory, crispy, and a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. Hello, my friends. This is Louisiana native Zachary Richard. I cherish the outdoor experiences that make our state so special. And for the first time in over 60 years, hooping cranes are back in Louisiana. Wildlife and fisheries need your help as these beautiful birds resettle in our state. If you spot a hooping crane, observe it from a distance. And if you witness anyone harming one of these very special birds, call the number on the screen. This message is underwritten by Chevron. In 1967, Dutch Stogner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stogner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Well, you got a long way to wait before next bird season, but it'll be coming and hope you'll join us for that next year. And you can check us out on YouTube as well. All of our episodes are uploaded there in its entirety. If you can't catch it on conventional television, check us out on Facebook and on Instagram. We also do contests from now and again. And check us out on BayouWildTV.com where you can pick up some great merchandise to wear out in the field or on the water. And also come join us here at Morton's. We're here on Mondays. Give them a call and find out which days and times will be and come have some lunch with us and talk a little fishing and hunting. See you next week on another edition of Bayou Wild TV.